On dry paper, I can start to sculpt out some dark portions of these rocks. And when you're doing that, try and use the dark of one rock to sculpt out the light of another, just like what I'm doing right in here. And the same applies to this area. And create some large light rocks. Try not to divide your rock in half with the same amount of tone on one part of that rock as there is on the other part. Come in here and divide your spaces into rock shapes and three different shapes or none of them the same. And you can apply more pigment to a wet area and sculpt out more rock shapes. And all I want here is a variety of rock shapes that aren't redundant. Nothing's more boring than to have everything the same. And leaving a little bit of white in an area is quite desirable. Even though you can't explain it right away, try and leave those light areas. And all that I'm putting in here are crevices and reflective light. Again at the ocean it's cool so I put a little more blue into my sepia for this area that might be reflective light. And I can put some over here. And the glow of this wave might lighten the shadow of this rock. So again, just plain water and our Kleenex for a soft glow. And then go back to our darks and darken it on the middle so side of this rock. And try not to have an equal amount of glowing rock. One should be more than the other. So I'll make that glow just a little bit less with a little more dark and some crevices not dead center on that rock. And certainly it would be dark in between several rocks. Now inside crevices you may use a little more warm color because the light bounces all around inside those crevices and some parts of those crevices can be very cool and some parts of those crevices can be very very warm. So I'm just applying a little more dark to some of those areas so that we get a little more distinction between the values and, and change the rock shape just a little bit. Then the reflection in the sand from these dark rocks and we don't have to overdo that, overstate that. Just a little bit of that is enough. Now we'll use part of the water reflecting some of the dark rocks up above. I'll use uh, a little more warmth in those areas. Leave little white edges up against the rocks. Some lighter portions of your wash. And then around the foam that comes up against, against the beach line. And we'll put a little bit of linear qualities in here and soften the edges just a little bit. And while that's wet, I can come back and just depict a little more of the dark shapes of the rocks reflecting down into this wet puddle. Now this is part of a area that had just received foam and could be a little bit darker than the white foam coming up. Now for the seaweed pattern that forms along the beach in the distance, I'd like to place that seaweed pattern with a very cool wash. 
keeping it in the distance and then as it comes forward we'll start to warm that we warm the pattern of the seaweed as it comes forward so with our warm orange mixed into our sepia we can start to apply a warm value and I'm placing a little bit of that warm in the cool back there just to join these up a little more as they come forward. Vertical texture in the seaweed. And of course, we have a dominant part of our seaweed, a subordinate part of our seaweed, and an incidental part of our seaweed. So it never stops. Dominant, subordinate, and incidental seems to dictate everything that we've done. And since this is dominant warm, I can place a little bit of cool in there. And I want a lot more cool in one area and a little bit less in other areas. Our every stroke and our large flat washes, our, sh our shapes are divided in. If this shape is too much like that one, then it's up to us to change one of the shapes. So by changing this shape, we make it different from this shape. That round shape is too much the same as this round shape. So I'm making this a little more square and changing the shape. Now I'll come back to the seaweed here in the foreground. Warmth into this color, into this pattern. And this is going to be our dominant group of seaweed here. And it has a subordinate cousin. And an incidental part of the seaweed. And then come back and put some cool into those cool textures. As the seaweed dries, it leaves these vertical areas. And this group can be not as important as this, these two groups. And try not to make this the same. And scrape out some textural interest. And parts of the seaweed has these long areas. Before we do anything in the next few lessons, I want to introduce the hairdryer to you. Before I make any more changes to our painting, I want to make sure that it's perfectly dry. Earlier in our lessons, I introduced our template for removing and changing areas very easily. I want to explain just a little bit of what not to do. The thing that you don't want to do is cut out your template on your paper, scoring your paper. So that is a very important issue with me. The way to safely remove pigment from an area using your template, find an open part of your template that you want to cut and draw in the shape with a pencil or a Stabilo pen. That'll give you the line of the area that you want to cut and then use your X-Acto knife to remove the unwanted areas. Then Take your mat knife or X-Acto knife and cut out the shape on a piece of cardboard or mat board. Then punch it out and you're ready to go. One other way to create a template is to use packing tape. Be sure and put some oil 
on your packing tape with the oil from your forehead so that it doesn't stick to the watercolor paper that well. Then carefully place it in the area that you want to lift out. I put several side by side. Then with my X-Acto knife, very carefully, I cut out the area that I want to lift out without going too deep into the fiber of the paper. Just deep enough to cut the tape, but not your paper. So this, this method is a little bit risky, and I hesitate showing it to you, but I think you deserve to know all of my little tricks. With my X-Acto knife, I just go into the edge carefully, and break away the tape. Once you have removed the unwanted tape, you may go back into those areas and lift out the unwanted areas of color. Again, do this in stages. You may use your micro sponge for this area. Once your paper has dried, you may very carefully go back and remove the tape from your paper. Be careful not to disturb the paper surface. This concludes our lesson for today. Register for the Juan Peña free watercolor painting classes by sending us your email. Indicate register me in the subject line. You will receive the class syllabus and a link to the YouTube lesson. Your email will be confidential and will not be shared with anyone. Register at penyef.freeartclasses at gmail.com.